Hi, this is Ken Harvey. I'm a professor and longtime professional in media and communications. I want to share with you the secrets of how to create effective advertising. I've asked some of my students to help explain these important principles. Advertising is a key component in all of the communications industry. It is advertising that pays for most of the news content that is produced. As a communications tool itself, advertising is what launches new products and services. Without advertising, no one would know about that proverbial better mouse trap that someone invents. So let's talk about some of the key components for creating effective advertising. Before I say anything else, I think it is critical to explain that single ads in any medium do not sell. They are relatively ineffective in doing anything more than pay for themselves. Just like politicians, advertisers need to realize that it takes a campaign to achieve major results. I bought my first newspaper when I was 25. I struggled at first because I was selling single ads week after week after week. Then I realized because of the low cost of paper and ink, I could afford to give advertisers more for their money if they gave me what I wanted, an annual contract to advertise in each week's edition. So for the cost of what I normally charge for a one-eighth page ad each week, I agreed to give them much, much more. What I gave them, as shown in this slide, was again for the cost of a one-eighth page ad every week for a year. I gave them four full page ads, four half page ads, four quarter page ads, 40 one-eighth page ads, four streamer ads, and 52 classified ads. By offering advertisers this entire package for a relatively low weekly price, it helped them to envision a full campaign and the potential results. And at the same time, it reduced my sales time. I no longer had to visit these advertisers to sell them on advertising with very mixed results. Now I visited them to help design their contracted advertising. My job changed from sales to service, from helping me to survive to helping them to succeed. It was better for both of us. Within one year, I had doubled the advertising revenue for the newspaper, and after two years, sold the newspaper for a nice profit. The design of these Timberland ads then worked together to create a unified message that Timberland is where you can buy all things for outdoor adventure, whether it's on the sea, in the snow, on the beach, wherever. Layout is an overall orderly arrangement of all the format elements in an ad. Visuals, headlines, subheadlines, body copy, and logo, which for functional purposes includes not just the logo type of the brand, but also possibly a slogan, seal, address, and contact information. Campaigning is vital to advertisers as well because it is only with repeat advertising that an organization achieves broad exposure, recall, credibility, and adequate interest to create desire and ultimately action. Advertisers need to understand this. As do the media representatives selling the ads. They do themselves and their customers a disservice otherwise. So now let's talk about the advertising itself. How can you make advertising successful beyond the campaign concept? Your AIDA strategy is to get audience attention, turn the attention into interest, interest in your product or service, build that interest into a desire, and ultimately create an effective call to action. You must subtly take your audience from ignorance to action. The AIDA strategy can be seen in this pyramid graphic. The effort uh, has to begin at the bottom, getting audience attention, and it must culminate in action. This chart adds credibility into the pyramid, but it is easy to see that credibility and desire are interlinked. Certain elements of a print advertisement correspond with the AIDA strategy. An ad needs a powerful visual element, which normally is what captures the audience attention. The headline should also help draw attention and begin to build interest in the product or service. The body copy must then achieve credibility, build desire, and issue an effective call to action. The logo, also including contact information, possibly a slogan, and other repeated elements uh, related to branding, uh, over time will also relate to credibility and provide the information necessary for the audience to take action. For 95% of the ads prepared every day, all four of these elements are essential to success. 
For famous brands like Coke, body copy is not a necessary element. Coke is no longer trying to explain its product or to achieve credibility. And its call to action is very simple and included in the headline, Enjoy Coca-Cola. Many of my students, however, want to design all ads like this, and that just doesn't work with most brands, most products, and most messages. The body copy, in most cases, is absolutely essential to success. Effective ad design and layout starts with a clear understanding of a project's goals and written content. This relates to the product's most valuable proposition. Why should someone buy your product or service? As you figure out your MVP for this campaign, you then develop visuals, headlines, body copy, etc. to get that message across to the audience. Keep your layout simple. One of the most simple and yet most effective is the poster style ad. It begins with a strong visual element at the top, a powerful headline underneath the graphic, and 50 words of body copy under the headline, and the logo and accompanying information in the lower right corner. This is a modified poster design. The earbuds are intended to look like a doctor's stethoscope, and the ad team used two headlines to convey the same message, one as part of the visual and one headline underneath. Then came about 125 words of body text and the logo to the lower right. The 125 words is not excessive, but studies do show that ads begin to lose readers after 50 words, so be careful. An ad needs a center of focus, which is usually achieved with the graphic element, but sometimes with the headline. Everything else should build around this element with a sense of unity. Creating an asymmetrical balance is frequently good, especially with larger ads, such as full page ads in a newspaper. You may have a large graphic element in the upper left, a smaller graphic element in the center right, and another graphic element in the lower left. It draws the eyes back and forth to all parts of the page. Some advertising experts say these elements achieve the golden rectangle of eye movement into the four quadrants of the ad. In newspaper design, we call such a design the golden triangle because the three graphic elements used to create this visual pattern form a triangle. However, if all ads look the same, even if they are all formatted in what research determines is the most effective format, together they create visual boredom. Advertising design is both an art and a science. We can tell you which formats readers find most effective when put side by side, but it's difficult to judge how much more attention some ads may get by being simply different in a pleasing and creative way. The body copy of this ad starts on the upper right above the main elements of the photograph and far above the headline. It goes totally against the science of advertising, but it was very effective. The graphic and headline are compelling for those who have this problem of hair loss, so they were willing to change their normal gazing pattern and return to the upper right to read the text. Contrast is important within an ad. Contrasting sizes, shapes, colors, type styles, etc. Contrast, as I already mentioned, is also important in comparing your ad to all the ads surrounding it. What makes yours stand out from the crowd? You should make an easy path for the eye to follow. Make effective use of white space in your ad. Use strong lines to hold together graphics and body copy. And use light and dark relationships to create layout interest. This ad exemplifies the effective use of colors, lines, and white space, as well as proportion. The so-called pixelated girl is the visual focus and the Samsung camera achieves that status. Other graphics are smaller as to not detract from the main elements. This ad seems to break most of the rules. There is no one graphic serving as the center focus, but all the photos as a frame to the headline together create a center of focus. Besides the poster style ad, there are other types, such as this picture window layout, where everything is built into the visual as one graphic. While copy-heavy layout uh, certainly has more than 50 words, some products and services demand more words to tell the story. I use this advertising approach in a political campaign very effectively. 
These are two pages of the four-page flyer I created when I successfully ran for city council in my home city. I wanted to tell people why they should vote for me, so I made this copy-heavy layout. Out of eight candidates, I spent the least amount of money on my campaign and achieved by far the most votes. This was a full-page political ad for a mayoral candidate in Tampa, Florida. With this news approach, I took the candidate from last place among eight candidates to first place in the polls. The circus-style layout is appropriate for stores with lots of products to advertise, such as this large computer store, or for supermarkets. As mentioned previously, research finds that the poster-style format scores the highest in recall. With this, the dominant visual takes about 60 to 70 percent of the ad, followed by a compelling headline, then by the body copy, and finally the logo. But as mentioned, recall is one thing. Getting people's attention originally is something else. Nixing Ranking is an ad that has one large visual and two smaller images, such as the golden triangle, golden rectangle that we talked about earlier. The visuals are intended to stop the reader and arouse interest, so the content must be interesting. Typically, the headline should fill up about 10 to 15 percent of the ad. When the headline appears below the illustration, it gains 10 percent more readership. Readership drops off if body copy has more than 50 words. Logos and related information typically take up 5 to 10 percent of the ad. The visual is usually the most important element. It may involve the package containing the product, the product alone, the product in use, how to use the product, product features, comparison of products, user benefit, or humor. Here are some more ads that depict several of these, these options. The uh, product in use in the upper left to the right is kind of a comparison ad. What you do with Without, in this case, a Palm Pilot, I believe it was called. Yes, Palm Pilot is you write on your palm. This ad obviously catches your attention just by its originality. The next most important element is usually the headline. There are many different types of headlines. Here are a few. Benefit headlines, as mentioned here, speak a foreign language in 30 days or get your money back. News or informative headlines. It's a girl. Provocative. Bet you can't eat just one. Question. What makes our tire customers smarter and richer than others? Or command. Obey your thirst. Ideally, the headline and graphic work together with a sense of unity, a unified message. And some headlines create the overall theme, such as this series of Got Milk ads. People are important in visuals. We relate to people, not to things. We feel emotion in a simple captured glance. And always think outside the box. Once you comprehend and can implement these seemingly simple principles, you can become successful in this challenging and exciting field of advertising.